Well, in developed markets, you take that for granted and you're willing to pay for, you're willing to get it for free because you pay for it in the form of ads maybe or something else. And so that pricing is sort of abstracted away from, you know, the consumer actually. The internet costs money. It's just, you know, the way you're paying for it is very different. The markup, right? And the, so that, that, you know, going back to like economic principles, that tax gets passed on to the consumer. Now, if you look at uh, new emerging markets, and I think you brought up a good point earlier, right? Like these, in these markets mm -hmm. leapfrog going from computer directly to mobile, right? right. Or uh, not even having internet access to immediately having it mm -hmm. uh, through through mobile, right? And mm -hmm. so with a, you know, $100 device, right? Like you can now have all, like everything that you wanted in the original vision of the internet right here in your in the palm of your hands. And so, you know, you said what, 1.4 1, 1. billion people live in Africa? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imagine bringing, you know, the half of them that don't have right. access, immediately being able to share information with each other. Yeah. Family members, right? People that don't often get to uh, connect with each other. People that might be traveling and, right. you know, need to be able to exchange content with each other to even, you know, if someone leaves from one part of the area to another for work, yeah. right? These people are going, leaving their families behind so they can go earn money. Mm -hmm. How do they send that money? They have to also go through those gatekeepers. With something like this, you're breaking those barriers. Right. And I think, you know, if, if you can get this in the hands of, you know, half a billion people in, in, mm -hmm. in continental Africa, like you changed the world. And I think that goes back to the original vision of the internet, that information sharing, that money sharing. Um, and it doesn't really matter how much this costs, but the fact that it's $100 makes it so much more attainable. Gentlemen, congrats on the partnership. Uh, massive, massive news. Appreciate it, Logan. Um, you've been one of our biggest supporters as well. Like. I love to dig into the partnership and share because Mo, I, you guys don't even know the story. I feel like of how the names of our companies came about. You know, like Jumbo means Swahili in English, and Jumbo means hello in Swahili. Like Aptos is very special. So, like, we really would love to just honestly on this share more about why we vibe with each other. Taking it back, I like it. I like it. No, I mean, first of all, can we do a pan out of this house where we're sitting? <laughs> <laughs> don't expose us. Don't expose us. We're all making startups yeah, yeah. on a way, budget. Everyone. We're yeah. at a $200 Airbnb. So uh, this is where we're filming this. But I think the amazing thing is East Denver is crazy. There's millions of events. I mean, everybody's jumping from event to event and you guys all came together and we made this happen. So really, again, kudos to both of you because I'm really excited about what each of you are doing and really... I think the vision of kind of Jambo is enabling more smartphone ownership, uh, Web3 penetration in newer markets. And that to me is what got me excited about crypto in the first place. Yeah. I think it's, it's a great point, right? Like, and uh, as I'm sitting here thinking about what we're, you know, we, the mission that we've been on for you know, almost like a decade now, if I think about it, it's been giving access to those people that have been left out. And I think that's what got everyone excited to jump out of the bed mm -hmm. and go, go into crypto. And somewhere along the way, I think we, stumbled a bit right i agree yeah <laughs> and um but i think the good thing is that i'm that we're reminded about is um you know just walking around meeting with you know founders and even you know catching up with you is mm -hmm. is uh focusing on that uh, on that mission and so when you see a phone that doesn't cost you know 700 dollars and uh you know is actually giving impact and penetrating right. markets where people need access to financial systems mm -hmm. To me, there was a no-brainer that it needs to be together with a, a, a blockchain like Aptos that can actually make that happen from a performance uh, uh, perspective. And so I'm su super excited about the partnership, but I'm, I'm kind of curious, like I think you should share your story of, of Jumbo and, and yeah. how you got here. And I, I would love to hear a little bit about that, yeah. For sure. Um, before I even get into the background, just to riff off of what Jumbo and Aptos like work together, Jumbo is solving two problems. We want maximum distribution in emerging markets. And second is everyone understands emerging markets three problems, cross-border payments, remittances, and banking and bank. That's the most interesting problem to solve you can work on the founder. But at the end of the day, this all starts and ends with mobile. The one thing you need before you, uh, you, when you wake up, before you fall asleep, you say hi to, you say bye to, you can't live 24 hours without your phone, let's be honest here. My yeah. wife doesn't like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> but, Neither uh, does my fiance. She's like, why are you always on Telegram or Twitter? I'm like, I'm sorry, it's the industry. We, we have to be connected. I know, right? Y'all did better than me. Uh, but end of the day, phone, distribution, but like Mo said, you need a blockchain with high enough throughput with the best performance to actually enable a lot of these things. Shout out Petro Wallet, pre-installed inside of our phone. Users can directly uh, work with APT tokens, AV chain, et cetera, straight from our phone. So 
Bro, this is awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, nice. it's really cool. Nice. I mean, uh, the, the other thing that uh, is exciting about it is like when you open up Petra, mm -hmm. you don't always have to worry about your seed phrases, right? Because we, now we have things like pass keys where, you know, just like a secure enclave enables you to store your passwords and be able to access them the way you use Web2. Yeah. You know, if you're talking about penetration into these mm -hmm. large markets and mm -hmm. you want to bring them access, like they have to have just an amazing user experience. Yep. And so when you use Petra on, on Jumbo, it, you're not going to have that clunky uh, Web3 experience that you would have uh, typically. And so even abstracting that complexity away just allows for more people to be able to access, you know, money and, and, and these systems. And so I, I think when when our team thinks about innovation and pushing uh, the technology forward, it's very much user centric, right? Uh, right? You know, how do we actually add value to these people's mm -hmm. everyday lives? Agreed. So, I mean, I'll say this, like growing up in Congo, family being third generation, like African, you know, ethnically Chinese, is that my friends in Congo use crypto every day um, for necessities. My friends in New York that I went to school with use crypto every day too, but they use it to trade and they see it as a portfolio, as an asset um, versus an emerging market. You really don't, well, I guess in different markets, markets are different. Argentina is a store of value, et cetera. But in where we're seeing, especially with mobile phone um, stats, is all using it. Like, you cannot Venmo your boy in Kenya if you were in Ghana, <laughs> right? Like, in the States, you can't WeChat pay them. Like, there is just none of that. Only digital payment that there is in one country in Africa right now is Kenya and PESA. So we're just trying to enable more digital payments and make everyone's life easier. They don't care if it's Web 1 or Web 10. So <laughs> exactly. I mean, from the technical aspect, abstracting like the private keys, but enabling it at mass adoption, I think is really the thing that we've all really wanted from crypto or Web3 from the beginning. But as you mentioned, I feel like we kind of stumbled and got lost a little bit on the way. And now I'm very excited because it feels like we're kind of going back to our product roots. We're enabling actual things that make people's lives better. Yeah. I mean, and this is the kind of stuff that you think about, you know, in a, in a garage or in a house when you really want to move a trap uh, house, a, a trap <laughs> house. Uh, uh, you want to move that product potent vision forward, right? Like hearing your your perspective, hearing the way you're thinking about bringing access again. And so we take all that feedback in from our market, from our users mm -hmm. and really push the boundaries of what's possible. And I, I started off in consensus and, you know, in the oh, Ethereum right. world. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had what would I have in Aptos today. And so that's that's what's inspired us to again like uh, bring these features and these hooks into the protocol right um and i mean it's, it's just amazing to see things really take off um so i, I i'm also kind of curious like right. from from your perspective like how are you breaking up the markets in either africa latin mm. america how how's jumbo kind of expand there and how what's your approach no great question i actually appreciate the layup because it's something i want to bring up <laughs> a lot of times when we talk about uh Jumbo, everyone just assumes directly to Africa, right? That's my background, everything, rightfully so. What to share is we're actually shipping Jumbo phones starting in January to 50 plus countries at the moment. Africa and LATAM are actually one of our largest markets. And LATAM, Brazil and Mexico make up 85% of the GDP and 70% of smartphone penetration. So the numbers actually make more sense than Africa. Mm. So obviously I didn't grow up in LATAM, I don't speak Spanish, but luckily we have some great partners locally. So um, how we break up, so geographies, Southeast Asia, LATAM, Africa, and if you want to go deeper, Africa, Goma Congo, Belgian colony, so mother tongue is French, right? Everyone there speaks French. You mm -hmm. cannot have a community, you know, in Discord, Telegram, in English. Brazil, that's Portuguese. You know, everyone thinks Brazil is so Spanish, Spanish for the rest of that time. So a lot of what we're doing from when Jumbo started was um, obviously brand beating, tail building, doing all that. But most importantly is making sure we localize to each region and we have a sort of community aspect to it. That's crazy. I mean... It's like the stat that I was reading um, from the, the Milken Institute was 50% of the world's population will be living in Africa in 50 years. That's wild. Very impressive. Is there, is there like a catalyst event that makes this happen? <laughs> <laughs> the Great Migration. I, 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 the great migration. I, I don't know what doomsday events uh, are those I don't catalysts. Know. Elon <laughs> keeps telling us we need to have babies. Maybe it's just Africa having more babies. I mean, yeah, Elon is from Africa, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. South Africa. Yeah. The, so I, I mean, when you think about where we want to be, it's where the, where you know there's going to be growth in these markets, and I think there's untapped potential here. Um, so much, you know, greenfield, and we're. Right. I mean, this is exactly where cutting edge technology can you know get to market faster. We can iterate faster and get these cycles in versus you know dealing with you know slower adoption rates exactly. and. Uh, in more, you know, cemented markets, right? Yep. So yeah. honestly, I was say as to that point, I think a lot of people underestimate how much time companies spend on their ecosystems. Because mm. in crypto, I feel like just ecosystem is so important. Like for example, y'all's conference, Aptos in 
um, SF, Dalla Labs, Petro, you actually get to meet all these founders in person and then sort of riff off that and then ideas flow. So even for us, like Jumbo isn't going to build the wallet itself, build a chain itself. We work with the highest performance chain. We work with Web3 Auth to make our web uh, multi-chain wallet. We work with Matrix Fire, Sleep Agachi, great gaming IPs that we pre-install into the phone. Mm. So the users can, you know, directly have access. They don't even need to know if this is Web 1 or Web 3. That, I mean, that, that's yeah. important too. That's important too. Mm -hmm. In terms of, I mean, the phone, where is the vision? Is it just to make the phone as ubiquitous as like iPhone or Android, like get it in as many people's hands? Is it more crypto oriented? Because there is a tie, but there's also just kind of a cheap phone. What, what's like yeah. the more broader vision for Jimbo? 100%. I guess if I can wave a magic wand or snap my fingers like Thanos, I'd say everyone in emerging markets would have a Jumbo phone. Like in Africa, I don't know like how many listeners, you know, of, uh, and I always refer to Africa because of the base there, the emerging markets we're tackling, but users like a family of 10 people, maybe there's only two people that are working that provide for the family, a phone, five people were using the phone, you know, and you get say each family member gets 30 minutes of data. Now, imagine if you're, say, a 21-year-old kid in Lagos, you're in Nigeria. At 10 a.m., you go buy the Jumbo phone, 99 US dollars. Say you don't have 99 US dollars. You work in, walk into a merchant at work, into to the merchant store, use Jumbo loan. You can get walk out the store with a Jumbo phone with a payment plan. But the best part is you start going to one of the 15 apps that's pre-installed. Only one of them is Jumbo. Make your wallet. Make your, um, look at the quest. Do the quest. Whether that's going to Petro Wallet and you will earn X amount of certain rewards after doing these things. Do this to my transaction on Matrix Fire, uh, one of the top Web3 FPS games right now, and you'll earn tokens. All those tokens accrue to your wallet, and then we provide the off ramp locally. So for the user flow, it will go get a phone, raise accounts, do these things, and then by 8 p.m., you can provide for your family. So that is sort of like how we think, not sort of just. Hey, how does this user benefit from you know a token price going up, et cetera? It's really how do they have utility locally, and then tokens for us is a great ranking system and how to reward and incentivize our users in smaller batches. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I love that vision. Um, I'll maybe answer from a, a, a very different sure. perspective. Um, you know, if you look at the original vision of the internet, it was to share information yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, to do it in a way that it's unencumbered. And the world we live in today is I got to pass through so many different gateways and gatekeepers. Google, Apple, you and, name it. Yeah. And, and you don't, and you don't even understand, like people think that, oh, you know, I, I put something into a search bar or, um, you know, go into my email. I'm, 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 I, this is essentially free. Well, in developed markets, you take that for granted and you're willing to pay for, you're willing to get it for free because you pay for it in the form of ads maybe or something else. And so it, that pricing is sort of abstracted away from, you know, the consumer actually. The internet costs money. It's just, you know, the way you're paying for it is very different. Yes. The markup, right? And the, so that, that, you know, going back to like economic principles, that tax gets passed on to the consumer. Now, if you look at uh, new emerging markets, and I think you brought up a good point earlier, right? Like these, in, these markets mm. leapfrog going from computer directly to mobile, right? right. Or uh, not even having internet access to immediately having it mm. uh, through, through mobile, right? And mm. so with a, you know, $100 device, right? Like you can now have all like everything that you wanted in the original vision of the internet right here in mm -hmm. your in the palm of your hands and so you know you said what 1.4 billion people live in africa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. imagine bringing you know the half of them that don't have right. access immediately being able to share information with each other yeah family members right people that don't often get to uh, connect with each other people that might be traveling and right. you know need to be able to exchange content with each other to even, you know, if someone leaves from one part of the area to another for work, yeah. right? These people are going, leaving their families behind so they can go earn money. Mm -hmm. How do they send that money? They have to also go through those gatekeepers. With something like this, you're breaking those barriers. Right. And I think, you know, if, if you can get this in the hands of, you know, half a billion people in, in, mm -hmm. in continental Africa, like you changed the world. And I think that goes back to the original vision of the internet, that information sharing, that money sharing. Um, and it doesn't really matter how much this costs, but the fact that it's a hundred dollars makes it so much more attainable. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about Jumbo just now. No, I, I, I saw phones. I'm enjoying yeah. Jumbo. <laughs> Thank you, Marquis. <laughs> no, I, I, th I think it's, I mean, both are beautiful visions. I, I think ultimately the combination of crypto banking, the unbanked, giving them cheap access to the internet, but mm -hmm. also 
allowing them to have a savings account where they're not paying 20, 30% on remittances. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, some of the higher taxes that really the first world doesn't think about. I mean, even from like the blockchain landscape, everybody thinks everything only happens in the US and they don't think about the entire rest of the world. And the US is small population compared to the entire rest of the world and expanding not only internet access, but Web3 with Aptos, with Jambo, like these are really pertinent and it matters that it happens sooner than later. Yeah, I think um, I I'd love to respond to that one because I feel like you're kind of hinting at you're down to take the show on the road to Asia and other parts of the world. Let's, uh, let's run it. Let's <laughs> run it. World tour. All right. I've got it on the record. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the the other thing I was going to say is what you, you highlighted, the um, you know, banking the unbanked is a very interesting topic, right? Um, and there's so many studies out there mm -hmm. where, you know, people are left out of, you know, bank the banking system. And I, I kind of think about this in a, a slightly different perspective where... You know, if I'm in, you know, sub-Saharan Africa or, or if I'm in some like, you know, village in, in uh, South Asia, we're, the nearest bank is pretty damn far. Yeah. <laughs> and I, maybe I want to be banked, but what I really want is to just be included in the financial system like you talked about. Exactly. Right? And so now the bank comes right to you. And that I think is really cool, right? I, and you can earn exactly what you talked about. You can earn really competitive market rates without having to go. You can get access to credit. You can send your family, your friends, Venmo yeah. uh, across world. Um, no, it really opens up. I mean, even doing like uh, remote work, I mean, mm -hmm. that cross-border payments, there's a lot of new possibilities once you have an internet in your phone and the capability to hold money where you don't have to walk miles to a bank that's gonna charge you an arm and leg. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Using the phone, like if you were able to airdrop a non-custodial digital wallet to each person in emerging market, you'd essentially bank the world, right? This problem, like Mo said though, they still don't have access to the global financial infrastructure because they don't have credit, right? Like why say Tencent or Alibaba as the two largest unicorns in Asia is simply because they have, you not simply because of this, but- <laughs> I don't know how simple have, it was. Yeah, it was there. not simple, but um, <laughs> they have complete like, information flow, right? On social data, user data, like you can go into uh, like WeChat mini program. Like if we're all sitting at the table right now, we all open it up and you can see how much loan you can take out within 30 seconds. And that's all just, you don't have, there's no, you don't have your bank accounts connected. You just know who you talk to your social circle. So similarly for Jumbo, we really want to provide a credit score for users. That's sort of the next step. That's how they're able to take out the loan. They can sort of leverage off of the different things, even for their family members. Um, that being said, in Africa right now, I think there's two sort of ways that we're going about distribution, Africa and Latam. There's one, it's sort of the Web3 crowd, where you have a lot of users that will see the phone. They won't be using it, but on an everyday basis, um, you know, it's replacing an iPhone in America, but they will be using it as testing out crypto applications, right? They can see this as the most crypto native phone to have for $100. You get a hoodie for $100 and you test out different things as knowledge. And the Web2 side is users that we're literally seeing on the ground. The Jumbo app passed 100K downloads, Google Play Store, a week ago. Users are buying the phone to make money. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's a sort of a different mental model as well for users here and over there. Yeah. So do you feel like when people are buying the Jumbo phone, they know like ahead of time it is kind of Web3 oriented and that's not only having the phone be cheaper, but having access to kind of the digital world that Aptos is creating is the catalyst to get them to experiment with like Web3 or just being able to make more money? Oh, no, great question. User retention and adding value to them is honestly what the team thinks about 24 seven. For example, if they just come in the phone and it's just, hey, make money, I don't like this, or I might be hunting for an airdrop or something, it's not as interesting for us, right? But to have a, why we have Petrol Wallet pre-installed, why we work with Aptos is so that they can have a gateway sort of to Web3. That being said, how do you educate these users to see a phone and understand all of this? I'm pretty sure, you know, even with many podcasts, you can't. I think that is, you have to localize. Languages, community, community managers. That's why Jumbo team right now is, um, I think, a lot less lean than regular crypto teams of the same size. We have over, you know, 200 employees, uh, most full-time. But these are just a lot of different localized communities. Yeah. One thing that's super hot, just like outside of crypto or inside of crypto is like the area of deep end. How does like deep end like relate into Jambo or even Aptos? 
Yeah, I guess, Logan, do you want to kind of frame D-PIN for the audience quickly before we go into <laughs> it's, it? It's super nerdy. Yeah. Uh, it decentralized uh, physical infrastructure networks. Generally, you're going out in the world, doing something, and then earning tokens and, re and reward. Yeah. Um, it can take many kind of aspects. Um, Helium is a popular mm -hmm. one. Uh, there are now others trying to do wireless or mobile uh, driving. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, I think it's a very unique way to onboard people into Web3 by allowing them to earn tokens without even buying tokens. Yeah. So with that, I think we look at um, the real world right. and what problems exist today. When you look at mapping of the world, for example, to you know physical networks, mm -hmm. uh, networking systems that are out there, where are there opportunities and gaps that exist? And when you look at you know very stable developed markets, there are very few gaps. You know, for for the most part, things work pretty well. Yeah. Um, in fact, so well that a few folks have uh, uh, amalgamated most of the uh, the market share, and and you have regulators coming to try to break things, uh, break things up. Right. You've seen that with uh, the Bell companies uh, when they uh, controlled uh, you know uh, telephones, mm -hmm. and uh, and you even see that today in in the way you know folks approach large tech companies too. In developing markets, right. we think DPIN has a massive opportunity for uh, disruption. And here, you know, people want to be able to earn and participate in the creation of these new networks. And so, if you can, I think you highlighted this really mm -hmm. well, right? Like, if you if we put a product out there uh, that people can test on the Jumbo phone and right. get feedback on, right. why don't they get to exactly. earn something, right? To yeah. your point, they should own a piece of that. 100%. Um, you know, if you help bootstrap the next social network, you should get something for that. If you bootstrap the next, you know, uh, a cable network or a satellite network in that part of the world, these people get to now participate in that. And I think that is so important because they're part, th these are power users that give you information as a as an entrepreneur to build and, and, and direction. And we should take, and, you know, give them uh, equal love. And so token participation allows them to help give us guidance. There's utility in tokens. They can have governance mm -hmm. and hey, you know, if, if Mo and, I, and James aren't doing something right, right, like we can actually uh, uh, modify things and, and get that feedback. So you know, tokens provide this amazing utility to help bring some of these uh, new networks that can have massive impact in markets. Um, and, and these users get to, you know, get own a piece of that. And that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even outside of the economical standpoint, just being able to onboard people uh, with uh, pass keys. Uh, is a much more seamless way, ultimately getting the phone in the people's of hands. I think it's very interesting. I mean, it, I honestly think it may be one of that those unique things that onboards the next 10 million people. I mean, we're nowhere cl close to like meta numbers um, right. in terms of like daily active addresses. But I think the goal and like hopefully this partnership will help enable that global adoption, uh, starting with people in Africa, the over a billion people. 100%. Uh, I think something that people also don't realize is that hardware devices, D-PIN, is cyber resistant. So one device, almost is just one user, you can sort of see. Even if they're trying to farm or do other things, um, they still have to buy that device physically and, you know, operate it. Versus if you're just farming other things on chain, you can be, you know, a lot uh, more of a bad actor. The second thing is, I'll speak to the supply chain part. I think a bottleneck at D-PIN is you haven't seen many D-PIN projects. There's an amazing project like Helium. Um, hive mapper mapping, um, et cetera, et cetera. The hardware component itself, like how do you manufacture that cheaply? If we're talking about the you know global population and we're talking about what crypto total addressable market is, definitely have to include emerging markets. They can't buy a hardware device, I say $500, $1,000, set it up with an internet connection 24 seven, mine you know, different tokens, et cetera. But what they can do is spend half the money they will usually spend on a mobile device that's a basic necessity for them already. And if there's already Web3 and crypto components infra built into there, that's a lot easier. So I just feel like the supply chain component is super important to be able to source cheap hardware um, pricing wise to be able to get more into the hands of users. Yeah, no, I love it. I think we're all very much aligned of like getting user adoption uh, because I think we kind of went astray, whether that was VC's fault or uh, just, kind of wandering through the idea maze of figuring out what works and what doesn't work. Um, I'm very excited for the future for cheap fees, uh, easy onboarding and very cheap phones that really enable that internet access and Web3 access. Yeah, it, I mean, that's a, that, that point is an interesting one too because what you're highlighting is if you 
and, and I think you said this mm-hmm. too, well, James, is these products, um, connection to information transfer, mm-hmm. money availability, I mean, these are public utilities in human society, right? Imagine not having a phone living in America today. Yeah, I mean, right? I got here via, via Uber. I, I'd be stuck in my hotel and yeah. uh, <laughs> wouldn't have been able to travel or do anything. You, so, so like if you, if you need this to just like live your day to day, I, I mean, how can we operate in a world that people don't have this utility? Yeah. And so you know, we're trying to do our best to make sure that not only does this phone actually get in the hands of people, uh, but how do they have a network that can live up to their expectations and their standards? And so, you know, I remember when the iPhone launched, I'm kind of dating myself a little bit. Um, well, you can see that with the gray hair. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you, you, when the iPhone launched, I mean, uh, Steve Jobs had to find a network that can really stand that product up and make sure that user experience was phenomenal. Yeah. And at that time, it was Singular, now owned by AT&T. And it was exclusive uh, because Singular had to extend a lot of resources to actually make sure that phone experience, that the first iPhone experience was flawless. And so this is kind of what we're trying to do here with you guys, right? Like mm-hmm. make sure that, you know, whenever someone gets the Jumbo phone, right. I kind of don't even want them to know they're using Web3. Yeah. All right. No, no, no one should have to think about what network they're on. They don't it, need to know that you're paying 30% to the App Store and we're trying to break the duopoly of Apple and the App Store, right? Secret mission yes, uh, right. unveiled. Uh-huh. Um, but, but it, you know, the, the, the market will ultimately decide, right? They will tell us whether this is a winning product. And right now we're hearing very strong signals that, you know, Jumbo together with Aptos is, is awesome. And why, why is it awesome? Because... You know, as you're doing mm-hmm. activity, you're earning points. You're earning, lo- you're you're becoming a loyal fan, a power user, and this point system could be very impactful to the way the average individual gets to participate in these new eco- new economies, right? The new economies are they're all right, digital, all digital. Yeah. I say point systems have been thrown around very lightly around the industry these days, but what is really a point system? Mm. A point system is to rank your users and how like the good actors, how much time they spent, and what transactions they did. And they should be rewarded in bootstrapping liquidity to your ecosystem. So mm-hmm. for us, a uh, point system is, you know, I, yeah, this is another sharing, a little output drop. But in March, we will be having a few large announcements and Jumbo points will be announced. Okay. <laughs> That's an okay. announcement of an announcement. Only when we are on the show, man. Yeah. Only on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> For, can, uh, James, can you share like any, the phone's relatively new. You guys have been working on it, cranking on it for a while. For can sure. you share any of the metrics of just like how, how many phones have sold mm-hmm. uh, and where you guys are kind of tracking there? For sure. So the first question, since I landed in Denver, every partner asked me, they don't say, hi, James, how you doing on the flight? How many phones you sold? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll that share. was me. <laughs> <laughs> so our forecast is 500,000 units of Jumbo phones sold by end of year. And we've revised that forecast 72 hours after the aptos announcement of us working together to 1 million phones distributed on the so every, yeah. and, 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 <laughs> we will have more numbers at the end of q1 we're wow. showing all our partners twitter everything for transparent which markets but as of right now i can share these sort of high level high level things you're gonna double uh blockchain adoption single-handedly <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, bro. and honestly it's been means a lot to me because having the phone is one thing for an emerging market user hands maybe the phones they buy are all they're usually between two and $300. So the RAM, the specs, the phone. But I can, I don't even know if I can share this publicly, but I have a few of our investors and good friends that have gotten the phone. And I'm going to share it because this is a mentor of mine too, like Chow or Reliance Down, or like say um, Justin, et cetera, have texted me since they got the phone. I've been using this as my work phone. Or our team has been testing different apps and games on this phone. So that's blown me away that someone that honestly is not just from you know the States or a non-emerging market, but actually works in product, works in tech that likes it so that's that's probably something that's been surprising yeah. big big testimonial i think uh i'm very excited for jambo to be in the market and go for a market that has really historically undertapped i mean again like i i think the u.s has kind of this myopic view of like u.s is everything and there is no other market that exists outside but it's absolutely massive making sure that you're price sensitive that fees are cheap on the blockchain are both paramount and like at the end of the day what people really want access to is things that will help better their lives, banking the unbanked, getting internet access. And this partnership is really kind of an embodiment of both of those. Totally. Um, I mean, you said it really well, so I'm not sure what else I can add to that one. But um, 
it, I think it's it's really about that connectivity and that bringing uh, bringing people into that uh, that digital economy, helping them leapfrog actually into the digital economy, right? Yeah. And so I think often people don't uh, they underestimate how impactful that would be. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at a lot of these uh, sort of uh, government initiatives across the world, by the way, um, around things like universal basic income, they're mm -hmm. aiming to solve the problems uh, that have been created because of the digital economy. Yeah. And they aren't necessarily moving as fast as, you know, we would like for the world, right? right. And this is where, you know, private markets could are more efficient, right? And so, you know, here you have a perfect example of that private market coming out and trying to create a system that rewards people and brings people right into the digital economy and helps them leapfrog right in. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, on, on the record, I guess I'm a personal fan of things like um, universal basic income. And I, and I hope they, that uh, that does come to fruition at some point. And there's some good examples and case studies out, uh, out there. Yeah. But we can't afford, uh, the world can't afford uh, to wait for, for that, right? And so this is where, you know, folks, uh, entrepreneurs and, and uh, you know, folks like us come into the space and try to solve these problems. And this is real impact, right? This isn't, you know, magic pixie dust. Like anyone can buy this phone for $100 and be tapped into the internet and have money available to them. Further, like right. you can actually now take test products and earn you right. know, money and you can do things with, with, with that money. Especially you can like, buy groceries, right? Like that's, exactly. that's amazing. <laughs> like, even if you have the number one best Web3 product to date, how do you reach someone in Nigeria or Brazil? You know, like you have no. to have a launch pad of sorts of a device that you can pre-install and those users can start using, you get feedback. I don't want to go into this too much around regulation, but you brought up like say the US, right? World outside the US. Just looking at crypto adoption today, you know, where do you want to be building your company? Even like as a founder, right? There's a lot of responsibilities in this regard. Would you want to be in a country where, say, the um, government is sort of more cracking down, certain exchanges you can't use, and it might not be the most positive outlook in this for regulation-wise? Or would you go to a country where, you know, their entire national reserves are basically in Bitcoin and crypto as store of value? The president, you know, is taking economy class to Davos to talk, to show crypto to the global world leaders, you know, Javier Menendez. But it's, it's pretty amazing. So, like, even in... All these regions, like I'll come out with this. Africa has no crypto regulation licenses. You can't have buy a license and provide a consumer facing app. But Botswana actually recently came out with one of the first sort of these beta licenses in a way. And a country of 2.6 million people has done more in crypto than some of the top five by like uh, Congo has 175 million people and Botswana is mm. definitely more on the forefront than that. So um, I look forward to seeing you in Botswana as well later this, <laughs> this year, sir. Are you doing a world tour uh, later on, each of you guys? Uh, I know uh, yeah. uh, Aptos is doing a DeFi event in Hong Kong upcoming. Uh, I think one of the important things that I've seen is just how important Hacker House is bringing that community as mm -hmm. you guys did together in Silicon Valley. Is there any more like travel plans either together or just separately? Yeah, I think uh, the the Hong Kong one is a, uh, is a big one. So I'm pretty sure you're, you're yes, confirmed, right? So he's confirmed. also on the record. I love getting people on the record. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, so we're, getting, we're having our Hong Kong DeFi Summit, uh, really highlighting the future of actually just finance, right? It yeah. is mm -hmm. very decentralized. Um, and there are new systems that are sort of emerging. Um, and it could be in, you know, web insp like inspiring Web3 web builders that are changing the way financial systems work. But you're seeing large institutions also take, uh, inspiration from those Web3 builders and revamp right. their work, right? And so, you know, th this is all very public, but, you know, companies like JP Morgan are building their own blockchain solutions like Onyx or Goldman Sachs is building mm -hmm. uh, their own solutions internally as well. And so this is this is an incredibly powerful movement that we've started. Um, you know, it all started from things like Bitcoin, right? And here, here we are today pushing the boundaries of, uh, of, of innovation. And so you have to be on the road. You have to be in Hong Kong where, you know, there are, there's a lot of appetite for the, the, the next generation of technology. Um, and so, you know, Hong Kong is a big place for us. We have a heavy presence in, in, uh, in, in Korea as well. You just got uh, back from Tokyo. I just got back yeah. from Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we're seeing a lot of uh, momentum in Asia. Um, we're excited about what's happening in Africa. And you know we can't wait uh, for uh, uh, you know things to clear up. We want to move where markets are moving. And so um, you know wherever there is an incredible amount of budding young talent that right. wants to bring products to market and be brave enough to launch a new phone, we're, we want to be there with those people, right? Yeah. And so um, you know hopefully we, we continue to be uh, present in those uh, in those areas. And uh, we're excited about that too. Amazing, so. James. Where can people buy this phone? We've been talking about it for a while, but yeah. where can they buy it? So Jumbo Phone. 
www.jumbo.xyz. You can order 30 to 90 days shipping. Since you're on this pod, if you use Jumbo Sam as a code, the shipping time will be a lot closer to 30. Ooh, all right. Now, there's some more alpha. Lots of alpha drops on the podcast. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and yeah, in May, in Botswana, um, Jumbo and Aptos, Aptos will be per, uh, participating in the Forbes uh, Conference Africa. And this is just a really unique opportunity because Africa just doesn't have many like, like media. Like there's not, out of like, say the 200 investors that are in Jumbo, I'm pretty sure less than 3% have physically set foot in Africa. So to be able to bring, you know, like such high caliber founders and projects like Mo, like um, I said, others that are going as well for this, it's honestly a really unique opportunity, less honestly for us than more for the local African entrepreneurs and emerging market entrepreneurs to be able to, you know, actually speak with those that are building in the space instead of sort of just trying to participate in things online and never be able to put a face to the leaders of Web3. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I think being in Africa, being on the ground or even kind of worldwide tour, mm. that importance of even like this, uh, I love that we're not doing Zoom or Riverside or in person. Uh, <laughs> and the trap house, uh, filming this, <laughs> making this happen because yes. it's, it's different vibes. You get to see the people in the community, you get to hear them hear their stories. And mm-hmm. it's really, really impactful. Yeah, it's, 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 it's quite special. Um, where are you going to be traveling? Yes. Dude, that's, that's what I want to know. That, too. Too. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Hong Kong and then, Botswana. uh, uh Botswana, <laughs> maybe, uh, going to Paris, but I, I also like. I think for me and all the conferences, it is important, but it's also interesting as number go up in the industry, you get a lot of noise. Mm. And I personally very much enjoy just kind of cranking away at the computer, but for special events, it's very important to make sure you show face, shake hands, and actually see what the builders on the ground are doing, because again, it can be kind of removed just from a keyboard. Oh, damn. That's, a, that's such an important point. And I think those relationships go such a long way when you are able to connect with Agreed. someone Agreed. You know, physically. And just talk about things beyond crypto and, Mm -hmm. you know, get, you know, principally aligned, spiritually aligned, have some fun building. Um, And so, you know, I appreciate East Denver and, uh, you know, the presence. The the OGs of uh, Ethereum, like really like respect to the Ethereum community. They always host great events. It's Mm -hmm. been a great shilling point for other communities to come together and connect. And I always say, like, I very much respect Ethereum for pushing the bar on smart contracts, really enabling the smart contract revolution because mm-hmm. without Ethereum, without Bitcoin, we wouldn't be here. Totally. 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 Of course. Yeah. Shout out to the Ethereum Foundation and, yes. uh, and everyone else. Shout uh, out. Shout but, out yeah. the whole industry. Anyone that's <laughs> made it to this day, honestly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I mean, the last couple of years have been extremely painful in crypto markets. I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, we're very prone to cycles and we're in a downturn. It looks like we're kind of at an upturn now, but mm-hmm really appreciative of all the people that stuck around, grinded it through Jambo, Aptos. I mean, it is not easy. Like the fear, the FUD, like people calling you scams. Like it's kind of like you do something ambitious and people will uh, attack you. And Mm -hmm. I think um, just kudos to each of you for staying course and grinding throughout the hard times. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, Logan. Yeah, especially doing a a hardware phone device. You know, like when we started this, there was not a lot of... uh, 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 comparisons. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I think uh, anything else that you guys want to chat about? Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, again, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming uh, and making this happen. Uh, it was an amazing conversation and uh, a lot of fun. Appreciate you, Lonnie. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Thanks, awesome, guys. James. Yep.